understand what's going on around you. You are in a state of war and you have precious little time to save yourself. This video is going to be a video essay on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which has been out for a while now, but if you've been following me for a long time, you'll remember my video where I discussed the marketing campaign of this game, talking about Ronald Reagan, talking about Yuri Bezmenov and all these different controversial figures. But in this video, we're going to look at how Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War actually does have surprising politics especially compared to the marketing campaign. Now, before we go any further, if you want to support my work, please like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel, maybe share the video. If you want to support me financially, please check out my Patreon in the description. Also, come and join my Discord and my subreddit and follow me at social media. All those links are in the description. And now let's get into the video essay. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task, projecting our very way of life from a great evil. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, the entire free world will benefit. I know you won't fail us. Over a year ago, I made a video that dissected how the Call of Duty series has historically been propaganda for the US military and the CIA. The Modern Warfare games featured Orientalist depictions of the Middle East while parroting the neoconservative worldview espoused by many during the War on Terror. The Black Ops games were even worse, sanitizing the actions of the CIA while rewriting history to make every communist seem evil and every American seemed like they were a hero. I was not hopeful that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War would be any different. A sequel to the first Black Ops and a prequel of sorts to the second game, this entry sees you team up with the CIA in the early 1980s to fight the Eastern Bloc in the pursuit of a mythical Soviet spy known as Perseus. The game's marketing featured Yuri Bezmenov, a defector from the USSR who came to the West and would tell anyone who would listen his far-right conspiracy theories about cultural Marxism and a successful invasion of all levels of civilian life by Soviet sympathizers. I made a whole video responding to the controversy and shining a light on how wrong Bezmenov was but safe to say using such a controversial figure in the game's marketing did not fill me with confidence. However, I'm surprised to report that the politics of the game are not straight up pro-Western propaganda. Of course you have the usual tropes. East Germans, Soviets, Iranians and Vietnamese are the faceless, soulless targets to continually shoot and kill. Dehumanization that is present in most Western FPS games. But the surprising message of the game is that you actually have a choice to go against the CIA. Even more surprising is that, I would argue, your main CIA handler is actually the antagonist of the game, and the game does more to humanize the Eastern Bloc than the other two entries put together, while also shining a light on some of the more nefarious elements of the CIA. Castro and I have some history between us. I had the opportunity to off the man, but our intel was flubbed. That's in a tidal wave of shit all the way up to D.C. So if I find out that Perseus is in cahoots with Castro, and Hudson happens to find one of my bullets in Fidel's head, well, I say chalk it up to collateral damage. I think to start with, we should discuss the problems of this game and the representation of elements of the Cold War. Like I said in the introduction, there isn't a great deal to humanize most of the enemies in the game, the representation of the Vietnamese featured in the game is probably the worst example of this. Now before people criticise me, I get that how in the story the Vietnam War sections are implanted memories in Bell, your player character, but I feel my point still stands. The opening mission features a fast paced romp through a Vietnamese outpost, which also features a big helicopter mission where you bomb villages, supply convoys and Vietnamese soldiers. Due to the American War in Vietnam being one of the worst imperialist wars of all time, I take special exception to this depiction. Just like the original Black Ops, there is no time spent trying to humanize the Vietnamese, contextualize the war, or help the player understand the reason they are fighting the Americans, or the reason why you supposedly must eliminate them. Western media has suffered with this problem for decades, and even better Vietnam War films by Oliver Stone 
do not address this issue, neither do newer films like The Five Bloods. It is just pretty standard orientalism found throughout the COD franchise. Black Ops games also have a weird obsession with Cubans being the bad guys, which they are in Black Ops 1, and in the past and future levels of Black Ops 2. Again, not much is really done to humanise Cubans, they are just depicted as a stooge of the evil Perseus, and Woods fantasises about getting another chance to kill Castro, as he killed a double in the original game where Mason and Woods were involved in the Bay of Pigs. Remember, this is a country that has been under a crippling and needless US embargo since it became communist. East German border guards and Stasi are also in the game, but they are also faceless enemies. Now, while most Soviets are just depicted as cannon fodder for the player, there is at least an attempt to humanize them that I will discuss later in the video. I just want you to know that this little thing that's happened with you and me. It was always for the greater good. You're a goddamn hero, you know that kid. Heroes have to make sacrifices. That's why when I ask you for one more, I hope you understand. It was never personal. So the story is quite interesting from a Call of Duty perspective. At the start, you get to pick your background and specialities that will give you certain perks. You operate out of a safe house in Europe and tackle missions to uncover Perseus, a mythical Soviet spy who has not been seen for decades. He is threatening to unleash Operation Greenlight on Europe. This is a fictional plan by the US to place neutron bombs secretly across major Western aligned European cities as a last ditch contingency measure to stop the Soviets from invading Western Europe. The game sees you play as both Mason and Bell. With Bell, you follow your CIA American handler Russell Adler and his team where you take on various missions throughout Europe to uncover Perseus's location and stop a potential tragedy. I feel unlike previous COD games, this knows it's treading in murkier waters. It also seems to take inspiration from films like Three Days of the Condor or Spy Game, the latter being a Robert Redford and Brad Pitt movie. Adler himself looks like Robert Redford in both of these films. And I want to focus on Adler here, because in my opinion, this CIA handler is the villain of the game. The big twist in the game is that your character was actually a member of Perseus and was picked up by Adler, Woods and Mason during the first mission of the game. Your character, Bell, was then subject to MK Ultra and brainwashed to believe he had fought in the Vietnam War alongside Adler. CIA's mind control program has had a great deal of success with implanted memories. You want me to tell them about my time in Vietnam? Lastly, you'll need a command phrase to trigger the implanted memories. We have a job to do. We have a job to do. It was hoped when the time came, Bell would reveal the location of Perseus. And this is what I find interesting that Call of Duty would even include something so immoral that the CIA did, such as MKUltra. We could talk all day about MKUltra, but in short, the program was a series of illegal experiments undertaken by the CIA. It originally began in 1953 and officially ended in 1973, and was brought to the attention of the public in 1975. Many of the experiments saw the CIA use numerous methods to manipulate its subjects' mental states and brain functions, including covertly administering high doses of LSD, while others included violence, electroshocks, or hypnosis. It took place at prisons, universities, and hospitals, and was not just conducted in the US. I feel it is interesting to include this in the plot as people will see it used in the game and then research it further. It was an indefensible program, so it already paints the US in a bad light. But an interesting caveat is that the game gives you the choice to actually go against the Americans once you realize you have been brainwashed this whole time. Upon awakening after you break your brainwashing, you are faced with a choice. Join with the CIA to stop Perseus from setting off the electron bombs hidden by Operation Greenlight and attack his compound, or lie to them. Interrogation didn't work with you, but thanks to MK Ultra's research, we had a backup plan. If you believed you were someone else, we could lead you to a place where you'd give everything up. I realize you probably hate us right now, what we've done to you. I just need you to fully understand the stakes here. What you do right now is not about me, it's not about you, it's about millions of other fucking people. It's about stopping someone who in the end has no true allegiance to anyone other than himself. So tell me, 
Where is Perseus? From the safety of Solovetsky. Solovetsky. I chose to lie, and I feel like the game wanted me to do this. These guys had lied to me, used me, stripped me of my identity, and forced me to kill my comrades from my country. Why should I help them now that I know the truth? Adler also tries to justify his actions in a typical American exceptionalist way. That seemingly everything America does can justify the means they use. Some of us have crossed the line to make sure the line's still there in the morning. No one's gonna brand us heroes or villains. If you have previously messed around in the hideout, you are also able to set up an ambush for the CIA crew. Once you mislead them and take them to a deserted outpost, they grow suspicious and believe you have lied to them. I was then able to launch the ambush and I killed each one of the Western intelligence team. The final scene sees you kill Adler and launch the bombs and frame the US saying, the West dies today. I think you deserve this moment, comrade. I wish we could return to Solovetsky to watch it all unfold, but that chapter is closed now. We begin the next one together. You did well. My god. How many green light nukes did he detonate? All of them, Mr. President. Does anyone know the bombs were ours? Materials related to Operation Greenlight were anonymously released an hour ago, presumably by Perseus. Calls are beginning to come in from across the globe. That son of a bitch. You and Vice President Bush are to be moved to secure locations immediately. In the closing credits of the game, it is outlined how Perseus is a secret organization designed to push the Soviet Union in a certain direction. Despite the awful acts you've just carried out in the game, it doesn't seem like the game has condemned your actions in the story due to how Adler has treated you. The game makes it seem like American hubris has backfired. Even in the good ending, the game ends with a standoff with Adler, where both you and him draw your sidearms and fire at each other at the same time. Even if you don't go through with Perseus' plan, Adler is still shown as the villain. This is either a subtle or unintentional condemnation of the actions of the CIA during the Cold War. We are in grave danger from the communists. Our freedom, our very way of life is at risk. Comrade Belikov, we are in grave danger from the capitalists. <coughs> our collective, our very way of life is at risk. So showing Adler and the CIA in a bad light is probably the strongest element of the game that shows it's not just total Western propaganda. But I also feel it does a decent job at humanizing the Soviets if you look for it. Of course you can choose to side with Perseus at the end, but the mission where you infiltrate the KGB's headquarters is an attempt to humanize your average Soviet citizen. Playing as a CIA mole within the USSR's intelligence leadership, you are tasked with giving Adler and Bell access to their headquarters. As you walk around the station, you can listen in on workers and civilian conversations. One sees a boss and an employee try to write something in English and discussing why it's confusing. British, from what I understand. Adam said he's MI5. We can double check our source. That's an important detail. Okay, where were we? <laughs> and with that, I would like to invite you to our party on the... Wait, isn't party an American term? Wouldn't it be tea if he's British? The Brits love their tea. At least we can agree on something. I'm not sure that an invitation to a party and an invitation to tea is the same thing. Fine, let's just go with get together. I would like to invite you to our get-together on the... Damn, Pavel, what's the date? The 2nd of May, sir. 
of course. The 2nd of May, to cordially discuss an amicable resolution to the recent incident off the coast of... Incident, sir? Uh, do you really need to keep interrupting me? No, sir. I'm sorry. This whole thing is getting to me. I could probably use a drink. Another sees two talk about going on holiday to Poland and how awful the food is, but how good the beer is. Have you ever been to Poland, Yuri? Yes, on a trip with Helena and the kids. We went up to the coast. Nice. Not too cold. Ah, fun. Did you get to swim up there? We swam quite a bit. In fact, we were stationed at Kaliningrad for a couple of years. We enjoyed the Baltic Sea. I hear the Poles have good beer and terrible food. <laughs> that sounds about right. The beer is exceptional. This stuff is small and subtle, but I appreciate the attempt to actually flesh out the citizens of the USSR instead of just knowing them as the faceless enemy we constantly have to fight. Okay, sure, Gavrilov isn't bad. I remember him playing top-notch footy for Iskra back in 74. It was always a pleasure to watch. Mm. Oh, yes. Those were the days. Blachin is a damn close second, though. Honestly, Kiev isn't half bad this year. But one more embarrassing display tonight, and they're out. Of course, this small bit of nuance is undone by the rest of the mission, where you rampage through the headquarters, but it is Call of Duty. I'm not expecting a miracle here. And to think, after all this time, they still believe I'm Perseus. <laughs> As if Perseus could ever be an individual working alone. So American. I went into Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War fully expecting to play through a campaign stuffed with revisionist history and orientalist tropes, just like the original Black Ops game. While these are present, it is refreshing to see the CIA painted in a bad light, not only that, it's clear the game has set up Russell Adler to be the main antagonist, regardless if you choose the American or Perseus ending. He is an unapologetic patriot who feels everything he has done so far has been justified, even brainwashing the player and stripping him of his identity. It is nice for a Call of Duty game to show the most troubling aspects of the CIA's actions during the Cold War, including the use of MK Ultra. However, in future, it would be good to see an attempt to humanize the Vietnamese and Cubans like Treyarch attempted to do with the Soviets here. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you like this Call of Duty? What do you think of the politics of it? Again, if you wanna find me on social media, all of that is in the description. If you wanna support my work, my Patreon is also there. Please subscribe to the channel, please like and share the content. And if you have made it this far, thank you for watching.